grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for our message this morning is our epistle lesson from James chapter 2, where we hear again these words. From verse 1, my brothers, show no partiality as you hold the faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory. And this is the word of the Lord. Dear friends in Christ, this past Wednesday we began uh, our confirmation classes up at Emmanuel Luther Church in Festus. And in our first class, we were talking about the first article of the Apostles' Creed, what we're going to say here in just a little bit. And that is uh, God the Father and the creation account as well in Genesis. Now, one activity that we did with the kids uh, was called uh, Who Am I? In which they listed various facts about themselves to show how God has made each of them unique uh, in their own special way. And some of the things included obvious answers like their name and where they are from and uh, what school they go to. And many of these were fairly similar. Uh, but we started to see the differences when we asked about some of the kids' favorite things, favorite food, favorite movies, favorite music, and others, we started to see a lot of different favorites. Now, if one of those kids uh, had said their favorite sports team was the Green Bay Packers, and the pizza was their favorite food, and the Shawshank Redemption was their favorite movie, well, that kid very well might become my favorite student. Uh, but alas, nobody said any of those things. Uh, now again, uh, having favorites are a good thing because after all, favorites are, can be what make us unique, or, or at least preferences towards sort of certain things, and that does make each of us unique in our daily lives. Now while having favorites uh, certainly is a, a good thing, I think most of us would agree that showing favoritism uh, isn't always a good thing. And in fact, uh, it's often quite annoying. Uh, and frustrating and even discouraging. Uh, consider the following. Parents uh, may end up uh, favoring certain children. One seems to get the most attention and the most praise, uh, while the others can never seem to be good enough. Uh, especially when the favorite child, uh, he may like this, but other, the other children may not. Students may see favoritism from their teachers. Uh, and maybe one or two students in particular end up being the teacher's pet, or kind of the goody two-shoes, and they never seem to get in trouble or their mistakes are often overlooked. The student athletes uh, may feel like their coach is playing favorites, giving one kid more opportunities and overlooking his errors uh, when it's clear that another uh, might better take his place. Now, of course, it's not just kids who see favoritism. Anybody here ever seen favoritism in the workplace? It can be frustrating uh, when you uh, or your co-workers, when you've done a good job and yet the boss overlooks that in favor of looking at another co-worker and they get preferential treatment. Uh, some other examples, at times uh, we might see uh, frustration by favoritism that's shown by the government. Uh, if certain industries are picked to be subsidized at either the local or the state or the federal level, uh, it can feel like the government uh, is picking winners and losers instead of, each, instead of giving each industry their fair shake. And finally, a word that goes along a lot with favoritism is that word bias. Uh, that word is thrown around, around a lot in our culture, especially uh, when we talk about political bias. Uh, it seems like all the different news organizations are biased kind of one way or the other, and it can make you wonder at times uh, how or if you're even getting the real story or not. So it's clear uh, and quite obvious that in a world of favoritism, uh, it can be very frustrating, especially if you're not the favorite. And I think that's what makes our message this morning from James uh, so different and what can be so challenging for us as Christians. Uh, we hear again from James, my brother, show no partiality, that is again favoritism or bias, uh, as you hold the faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory. For if a man wearing a gold ring and fine clothing comes into your assembly, and a poor man in shabby clothing also comes in, and if you pay attention to the one who is wearing fine clothing and pay no attention to the one who is wearing shabby clothing, and say, sit, stand over there or sit down at my feet, have you not made a distinction among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? That's playing favorites. And my goodness, though, that really can be hard, can it? 
It was hard in the early church uh, for Peter uh, when Paul confronted him on showing favor to the Jews instead of the Gentiles. It was hard for the entire community of believers as they were first when they were distributing food to those who were in need. Uh, they were favoring the Jewish uh, widows and they were neglecting giving food uh, to the Hellenistic or the Gentile widows. And it was, if, it, if it was hard for the early church, then it could certainly be hard for us today as well. After all, we live in a world of favoritism, a world where there is constant judgment going on over one another. And when we live in a world of favoritism, that unfortunately can carry over to us here in the church. And that's exactly why James is warning us this morning. Because after all, that's not who God's people are, and that's not what they're supposed to be doing. James continues, if you really fulfill the royal law of Scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You're doing well. Uh, but if you show partiality, you are committing sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law but fails at one point has become guilty of all of it. You see, when we look, we can look at our community, uh, we're bound to see people uh, who are different than us, people who have uh, different opinions than us, and there are some who are even vastly different from us, even here uh, in St. Genevieve. And if we look at another person, uh, whether that's here uh, at church or in our family or work, and say, you know what, that person doesn't deserve my love, that person doesn't deserve my forgiveness, and even if we do that with just one person, in just one instance, and say, you know, that person doesn't need forgiveness, that person doesn't need my time or attention, that person doesn't need the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, then we become guilty of breaking all of God's law. That's not a very good place to be. But dear friends, that's what makes our Lord Jesus so amazing. He never stumbled, he never sinned, he kept the whole law perfectly, and in doing so, he did not show favoritism. He didn't just look to save the very best people, he didn't just look to save the Jews, the his chosen people. No, Jesus came to save all people. In today's lesson, he, deal, he heals a Gentile deaf man, and right before it, he heals a Syrophoenician woman, again, a Gentile, he heals her daughter by casting a demon out of her. Throughout the Gospels, our Lord shows again and again and again that He has come to save all people. He didn't come out to pick the best and the brightest and the most righteous, but rather to save the sinners. He didn't deserve it, He didn't have to, but He humbled Himself in love to take the punishment of the world by His death on the cross. That's what He's talking about in John 3 16, right? And that's what Paul writes about when he says to Timothy that God desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now speaking of truth, I mentioned earlier that it can often be hard to get the real story, to get the truth, and the same is true for us in the fallen world. Uh, the other day I was listening to the Lutheran Hour uh, Ministries Daily Devotion, uh, which was titled, Be Realistic. And the devotion went on to mention how the devil can often uh, get into our heads and tells us to be realistic, uh, but in being realistic, uh, he tells us to do all the wrong things and to favor the wrong uh, things and ways. The writer goes on saying, how do we counter the devil's offenses? How do we answer his challenges? How do we beat his powerful temptations to negativism and fear, depression and defeat? Strangely enough, the answer lies in being realistic. We need to look realistically at who we are by faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. We're not the weak, rejected, unloved wretches that Satan would like us to believe. We're the sons and daughters of the King of Kings. We're chosen, precious, gifted by His grace. The same Holy Spirit who empowered our Lord Jesus Himself when our Savior walked upon this earth lives right inside us. Jesus defeated sin and death and hell and He shares His victory with us. Dear brothers and sisters at Holy Cross, we live in a world uh, that is based on favoritism and judgmentalism. We've already discussed how easy it can be for us to be partial uh, towards others, but then we see Jesus in His amazing grace that knows no limits for us and for all people. And as people who are sons and daughters of the King, uh, we're supposed to not be impartial, 
to not show favoritism, to not let judgment triumph over mercy in our lives. But what does that look like? I don't know about you, but for me, it's kind of hard to picture how just to not do something. And so instead, I like to think of, you know, what, what can we do? What is the positive that we can do? Even if we struggle to love other people, even if they're different than us, how can we show that love to them as Christ has loved us? And I thought of three ways, at least, to share this morning. And there are more, uh, but these are just three. Uh, so first, uh, if there's someone you know, uh, who maybe you're kind of judging in sense that you have a problem with them, Think about what your part in the problem is. No matter how small, Jesus, after all, says uh, that before you take the speck out of your neighbor's eye, to take the plank out of your own eye. Number two, remember that every person, and that means every person who's ever lived, every person in your life, is a sinner for whom Christ died. And that includes you, that includes me. And finally, number three, pray. Pray, as Jesus said, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. So ask the Holy Spirit to fill you with a heart of mercy, with a heart that is gracious, a heart that forgives. We'll never do any of this perfectly on this side of heaven. But every small action of mercy and love, and yes, impartiality, bears witness to our God, who does not show favoritism, but loves us all. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds in this Christ Jesus to life eternal. Amen. We invite our children forward as well as Tammy and Ruth for our children's lesson and object lesson. Jesus' name we pray. Jesus.